things I feel like good that I can be like, yeah, I can do that well. Fried chicken, nailed it. Okay. The camera is crooked. Hold on. Is the camera straight? Maybe. Here we go. It's rolling. Hi, I'm Sola. Welcome to my kitchen. And today I'm gonna cook you through my life. I'm gonna show you three recipes that kind of really define three important moments in my life. How's that? So the first dish I wanna show you is chicken korma sandwiches. This is uh, my mom's recipe for chicken korma. It's like, a, it's like an everyday korma. My favorite thing as a kid was to pick off the big pieces of chicken from the korma, toss it with some of that sauce, and then make a sandwich on untoasted white bread with a lot of mayonnaise. I think there was six months of my childhood where it was the only thing I would eat, and I haven't had one since, so I'm excited to see if it's any good. <laughs> Carbs always make everyone feel better. To start, I'm gonna blend up, this is just like totally roughly diced. You don't have to get crazy, because we're gonna blend it up. Okay, and right back in the same blender, no need to clean it, I'm gonna blend up our marinade for the chicken. I need the top. My mom would always buy a whole chicken, break it down to parts, and then take off the skin. Um, so that's what I did here. So we're gonna be simmering this sauce for a long time. So if you do boneless chicken, it's gonna just dry up, and if you keep the skin on, it's just kind of floppy and gross. Oh God, it's getting all over me. Here, my hands. Get extra credit and really crush this. You can marinate this overnight. To be totally honest, my mom never had time to like plan meals like that. You know, she worked full time. She would just come home and just let it sit for like 20 minutes while we put, prepare the rest of the stuff. There's plenty of time. This key is like extra, extra dark because I kind of forgot about it on the stove. <laughs> but it's fine. It's still delicious. Look at that onion. Just frizzling away. Huh? Wow. And I'm going to give you a quick B-roll of dog sleeping. Hey, Clementine. I just woke her up. How's it going? Oh geez, so much just happened. I don't actually make a lot of Bengali food at home, so every time I have to call my mom, so she's very excited about this. I first thought I was culinary school. I had this attitude that I like knew more than everybody else. Turns out that's totally false. When I would make my mom's food, I would always try and like, you know, make it more, you know, update it, refine it, do things like add chicken broth instead of water, but it actually makes it terrible. So now I just trust my mom and I like to make things the traditional way. They're a tradition for a reason, you know? You know? Okay, they are, they're not quite there yet, but when you get this close, it happens pretty fast. It like carries over right in front of your eyes. I've burned these so many times. If you take them out when they look perfect, they will burn. Just a moment before. Huh? Whoa. Cool, okay. Going into all that heat. And then here I've got cinnamon, cardamom, bay leaf, and coriander. And that's all the spice we need in here. It's nothing crazy. And this is gonna cook down until it's super thick. We want it to have like no moisture left. Oops, I turned it off. It has like totally cooked down, deeply browned. And you can see that the fat has kind of like broken out of it. That's like, that's the sign. Some dynamic camera angles for you. Whoa, look at that, zoom. Oh yeah, you are a pro, this is great. I'm gonna add my chicken and scrape in all of the yogurt marinade. I could do that smoother. The chicken is cooked through and like totally falling off the bone. It's really important to cook it until the fat pulls out of it like that. I always thought it was weird that you're just throwing whole chilies in the pot, but it adds this really nice fragrance that um, you'll miss if it's not there. It has it ready to go. I'm gonna go for a breast actually. That feels what I, like what I want right now. I want like big meaty hunks. I'm gonna dress it in some of this sauce. Make sure you get some of those frizzly onions in there. Squishy white bread, untoasted. This is important. Mayo, probably too much. Edge to edge, okay? Like I mentioned before, I haven't actually had this chicken parmesan like as an adult, so maybe I'll hate it. And 
and we're gonna cut up our crust. Remember, this is something eight year old me would eat. I'm not messing around with crust, I'm so picky. Everybody knows that triangles taste better, but my mom didn't know. My mom didn't know back then, and she would always cut sandwiches horizontally. So it's what I'm gonna do today. We're going full nostalgia here. more sophisticated than I imagined. It's really good. I can understand now why I ate this exclusively for six months of my childhood. <laughs> you know, you're gonna come back to me in six months, I'm still gonna be eating the sandwich. This is really good. I think now as an adult, I'll eat the crust. Between korma and this dish, I guess I decided I wanted to become a professional cook. I read that book by Jeffrey Steingarten, The Man Who Ate Everything, and in the intro he talks about how he had to, in order to be a good food critic, he had to like get over all of his picky eater stuff and like eat everything. So I kind of went through the same thing. I forced myself to eat everything and I hated most of it, but I just kept eating it. And now I like those things. So I started out working at like wherever I could get a job, every single chain restaurant. I was fired from Cheesecake Factory, but then I really wanted to get into fancy restaurants. So I couldn't do that until I went to culinary school. And then I got, I went on the fancy track, which is going to be what I'm going to make for you today. I'm going to make you a modern crudo filled with techniques that you'll never need in real life. As with any proper modern dish, we're gonna start with the foam. <laughs> the blender is dirty. No, it's at the bottom. Okay, foam. So I've got a mixture of lemon and lime juice here, and that's gonna be the base for my foam. Because I don't want it to be too, you know? Oh, we still need to season it. I don't remember the ratios. There's a certain amount of stuff that's supposed to use in here. I can't find my notebook, so I'm gonna eyeball it. But if it's your first time, you should definitely look up a recipe. It's gonna be fine. It's just foam, guys. Put your liquid in the blender first, and then get it going into like a little vortex, and then sprinkle in your powder so it doesn't get clumpy in here. And now I'm actually gonna whip it on the stand mixer, and it's gonna get super thick. It's like a milkshake. We're gonna whip it up. I believe we have foam. Check it out. It is like, just like a meringue. And what I like about it is it's actually tasty. That tastes like lemon and lemon. And I've got myself a nice little ceviche. And this liquid that you've got from it, this is called leche de tigre. Mm. I'm gonna eat this, don't you worry. Just gonna cut some fish. <laughs> so we got some nice halibut. I'm gonna use the sharpest knife I have, which is this one, because I haven't sharpened my knives in five months. Yes, I just need two beautiful little slices. Whenever you're cutting protein, you always go against the grain. That's enough. It's a tasting menu. Okay, so because this is modern fine dining, I got the biggest plate I have. And we're gonna use the back side. Huh? You're so modern. Fish, right in the middle. Boom. Salt. A little bit of silk chili. Similar to Aleppo, kind of like dried fruit smoky vibe. It's very mild. Whisper. You don't wanna over walk around it, no? Oh yeah. It's got acid, it's got lemon, it's got lime. Huh? Modern fine dining, guys. I made so many different kinds of ices at this job. I spent most of my time inside of a freezer with liquid nitrogen. Okay, it's melting. I gotta take a picture. Whoa, look at that. Tiny fork. I know I've been making fun of it, but it's delicious. I mean, why wouldn't it be? This kind of food is ridiculous, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, it's a little stupid. Sure, I learned some cool cooking techniques, um, but I think the biggest thing is discipline. We would start at 10 a.m. and we'd work until 2 a.m. So, I mean, now every job feels relatively easy. I think when it comes to learning about flavors and, you know, what food tastes good, I think that's 
foundation actually comes from my mother and the food I ate growing up. Okay, so this is the final dish I want to show you, the fried chicken that my husband and I made at our restaurant. We didn't like think it was going to turn into a fried chicken restaurant, it was just one of the dishes, but it ended up being the dish that people ordered the most, and then by the end we were just a fried chicken restaurant. The thing that I like about this fried chicken, and I think that why it's like a good way to explain to you how, how my, my culinary journey, or it's a really simple dish that so many people are really familiar with, but we have a couple of tricks up our sleeve to like really take the fried chicken to the next level. I really like a dry bread. So this I dry bread two days ago. The flavor really penetrates into the flesh and you end up with like super moist, super juicy chicken that also is like really forgiving. So if you over fry it, it's not going to be dry. Two days, two days dry brine, you got to plan your fried chicken. It's going to be worth it. I like to fry in a skillet. When you're doing a deep fry, that steam gets trapped because it's completely submerged in oil. And what happens is you end up with like a gap. But when you do it in a skillet, that steam during the first half of cooking is able to escape so that your crust just adheres a lot better. Something that's like higher quality, like sunflower or peanut or grapeseed. And if you really, really, really want to go for your fried chicken, you got to do it in lard. So batter bind is a modified starch. If you look it up, there's not that much information on it. It helps things like really adhere. And you know, I don't make fried chicken a lot, so I like to go for it. Get the batter bind, get the sunflower oil. It's going to be worth it. Supplement it with something called crisp coat. This is another modified starch that just keeps things super, super crunchy forever. Okay, and then finally, a little potato starch. That this is gonna just make it like light and, and shattery and thin. It's great. So if you don't have batter bun or crisp coat, that's totally fine. Just do this with AP flour and a little bit of potato starch and it's gonna be awesome. I don't know, you just think fried chicken, that's not that hard, but um, when you're doing it at a restaurant at a large scale, everything's harder. This morning I forgot we were doing this and I drank the last one really. <laughs> So, I, I'm gonna thin out some yogurt, it'll be fine. Alright guys. A very important trick, getting those really nice Popeye style craggly crunchy bits. So you want to drizzle a little bit of your buttermilk right into your flour mixture before you get started and it makes little clumps and it gets so good. Lightly dust in this batter bind with one hand. Now you wanna shake off all the excess. You want it to be a really nice light dusting. Now we're going into our faux buttermilk. We wanna really pack it in at this point because we're going for like big craggly Popeye style. So it's really important. Now I really like to start my chicken skin side down for the first fry. Gently away from you. Hey, we did it, success. Oh boy. Hey, look at them. Look at them. Some dried Kashmiri red chilies, Kian John chilies, arbles. Just enough to cover. Bring it up to a bare, bare simmer and then turn it off. You don't want it to get too hot because then it will kind of get acrid and bitter. You see? Look at how crunchy. Oh, God, it's been spilled on the computer. Once again, you can totally have fun with this. Mix it up. Keep it entirely. I think it's just like a nice fun way to like wake up your fried chicken. I mean if you if you don't like MSG you can leave it out, but I I truly believe it, it, it makes a huge difference. Done. Can you look at this? Sorry guys. You're back with, but there we go. Huh? I feel very confident. Wait, no, no. This, this needs a little more time. <laughs> so, I like to start with the dust. And this might be weird, but I personally like to only put it on one side. Because it's kind of nice, you know? You got a hot side and you got a cool side. I like to pre honey my chicken. But 
chicken can be this crispy, you'll never, you'll never want it any other way. It won't. Really, 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 really crunchy. I'm a more than one bite girl. <laughs> the warm spices in here kind of echo the, the warm spices in the korma, which is, I didn't even think about, but it's totally happening here. Old school, new school. We're still just frying in a skillet with just a couple of twists, you know? Thank you guys so much. I'm glad you're able to join me, watch me cook my life. Um, what was I supposed to say? <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, see you next time. Internet. <laughs> Done? Yeah.